Hello everyone! In our last video we have covered the most basic features of our planning view. That video shows the most common use cases, so if you haven't seen it, please pause this video and firstly watch the previous one. In this episode, we will go over more advanced use cases that will allow you to fully utilize activity timeline for your planning needs. In addition to standard Jira tasks, activity timeline also has a set of internal events that allow you to better plan the capacity of your resources. They include booking, placeholder, as well as different non-working events. By non-working, we mean days off, sick leaves, vacations and holidays. Each of the event has its own feature. For example, a day off event excludes a day from the availability of the resource, while overtime event works in the opposite way and increases the capacity of the employee by a certain amount. In this way, you are always sure when and for how much the resources are available. Another useful event is a placeholder. It essentially works as a pre-planning, as it allows users to create tasks without creating them in Jira. This is useful when the project or task may not be confirmed just yet. Later, you can easily convert these placeholders into actual Jira tasks, simply by approving them and filling all the fields in the standard Jira issue. We recommend using placeholders when you want to play with different planning scenarios but you don't want to mess up your Jira. Last but not the least, we'd like to show you our booking events. This is one of the most powerful events in our opinion. The idea behind this event is that you can allocate someone to a project or activity for a certain amount of time per day or as a percentage of the capacity. It is especially useful for long-term planning when you may not have all the Jira tasks created but you like to forecast what will be your available capacity in 3 to 6 months. With bookings, this is possible, as you can quickly allocate users to different projects and then check what's the availability of your team. In addition to standard events, you can create your custom ones. To do this, simply go to New Tasks, Manage Event Types, then choose which event you would like to create. For example, we can create a meeting event to track time for our team meetings. Since we need to track time, it will be based on the booking event type. We can choose if that should be a billable or non-billable type and select an icon you like. Now let's go to our plan and create our team meeting. Select a meeting event from the list, choose to create it for everyone in a team and you can also make it recurrent, as it is a weekly meeting. Now we can see all these meetings in our calendar. But if you made a mistake, don't worry, you can delete all these meetings simply by clicking on the icon and voila, they're all gone now. We have now covered how to work with Jira issues and internal events, but it will be handy to know how to manage a large amount of them. Activity Timeline has two options how to move tasks around in bulk. First is individual. This is handy when you need to make a space for some urgent task. Simply click on the person's name and choose bulk reschedule. Here you can choose what you would like to do, move tasks forward or backward, reassign tasks to someone else and so on. You can also do the same for everyone in a team. For this, go to the extra tab on the left panel and choose bulk reschedule there. In this case, this action will be applied to all users in the team. Filters and dashboards It is pretty common for users and teams to be working on multiple projects at the same time, so users could have many tasks assigned to them. But at the same time it's important to be able to see some specific tasks. To do this we recommend using our left panel and top filters. Here you can select the project or other filters. For the left panel filters you must also enable the switch for them to be applied to the calendar. In this way you can quite easily see the individual projects. It would, however, be very uncomfortable to switch between different filters back and forth, that's why we have created dashboards. That allow you to save all the configurations on the left and top panels and quickly switch between them. When you create the dashboard, you can also share it with your colleagues. For this, go to Dashboards, click Manage and then Configure. You can share it with the individuals, teams or people in the specific user roles.
holiday schemes. Tracking holiday is an important part of planning, so it's essential that the users have proper holidays configured. In Activity Timeline, you can configure separate holiday schemes and apply it to the whole team. If you have teams in multiple countries, we recommend having separate teams for every country. Go to Configurations, Teams and Holiday Scheme. Here you can create a new scheme, select holidays and apply it to your team, so all users of the team will get these holidays on their calendars. Calendar integration Another useful feature of Activity Timeline is an ability to integrate with different present calendars, like Google, Outlook or Apple calendars. This feature allows you to export whatever scheduled on your timeline directly to your calendar. To do this, go to My Account, Calendar Integration, and then generate a unique URL and copy it. After this, go to your personal calendar and create a new calendar from URL. After this, there will be all the tasks in the calendar. Internal resources. Lastly, we'd like to show you how, in addition to Jira users, you can also manage non human resources in Activity Timeline or even create timelines for potential employees. Our app allows you to create internal users, which we call resources. To create a resource, go to Configuration, then to Users, and then to Resources, and create one. You can define the same characteristics for resources as you do for users, including skills and position. As mentioned previously, you can track capacity of your equipment or spaces with our resources, or you can create some potential users you haven't hired yet but you would like to plan for their capacity. You can even create a functional team called Needed Resources, based on their skill, which you can use to display what specialists do you need to hire to stay on track with your current plans. That's it for today, we have covered some of the more advanced use cases for our plan view, however, there are many more features which you can discover in our next videos. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our support, which is support at See you in the next episodes.